No hot tubs, no barbecue. Yeah, I'm in the Big Apple. Actually, we did pick a great time to come for. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Would you turn off the fountain or whatever that is? <laughs> we picked a great time to be here in New York. You know where I went first? Little Italy. San Gennaro, did you go? What a feast. Oh, yeah, I think a lot of you did. Don't you love that little part of New York where there's music and calories? Sauces each, huh? Hot sauce, fried dough. That's what I love. It's the kind of food they serve with a napkin and a paramedic, right? It stays right here for about seven or eight years. You walk around with it. I love it. Uh, Los Angeles doesn't have anything like that. Not that I'm putting down Los Angeles. No, no, I take it back. We have the Feast of Jack LaLanne. We do. They serve yogurt and wheat germ, alfalfa sprouts. It's a real blowout. You folks would love it back here. What else is new? Shogun. Was Richard Chamberlain wonderful? Ah. What a hit show. So don't be surprised as you watch my show today. I want to be popular. We're putting in Japanese subtitles through the whole show here today. But he was terrific. I hear Freddie Silverman wants him for a series called the Misadventures of Samurai Lobo, which he'd be wonderful in. Sixth Avenue, that was a big surprise. You now have a bicycle lane. Huh? Isn't that great? Uh, unfortunately, the horses haven't recognized that that is a bicycle lane. I notice the bicycle riders are rolling their pants a little higher than they uh, used to. There's a new gear for uh, slipping and sliding in that lane, too. Well, we have a wonderful show for you today. Of course, I say that every day, but today I really mean it. We have a theme, as Johnny Carson accuses me of, legends. Well, that puts you all into shock. Legends, exceptional, fabulous women are here, and I'm going to tell you why. Oh, you can let it out. Do anything here you want. One of the country's most dynamic advertising executives has spent the last I guess 12 or 13 years luring legendary women into being photographed in Ranch Mink for a book called What Becomes a Legend Most? The Black Gamma Story. Man's name is Peter Rogers. Actually, while I'm talking now, you're going to be looking at the cover of that book, and there are some of the legends. Some of the women who just couldn't resist Peter Rogers' charm and the feel of real mink. Look at those ladies. Well. I'm sure by now that you have guessed that some of Mr. Rogers' legendary mink-clad stars are our guests on the show today. And I want you to meet our legends right now in their minks, in alphabetical order, because this would be a big problem today. First, one of the greatest names in theatrical history, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lillian Gish. <laughs> classic performances in films, ones we will never forget, Miss Myrna Loy. of the musical theater, Miss Ethel Merman. First, the 
darling of MGM musicals and now the toast of Broadway in Sugar Babies, the lovely Ann Miller. <laughs> Metropolitan opera star Renata Scotto. And we'll meet them all and talk to them right after this word from your local sponsor. We'll return. Directly from the stage of the Mark Hellinger Theater, where nightly she stars with Mickey Rooney in that big hit, Sugar Babies, to our stage here at the Vivian Beaumont Theater in Lincoln Center, and here to sing for you, the dazzling Miss Ann Miller. <laughs> Up oh, for me and everything, didn't thank you? you. Huh? Well, it's Mr. Halston did this for me, and I'm I'm wearing it on your show. I always try. Is this to the first time? Get you doodled one? up on your show. Yes, it, it. Well, no, it actually it is the second time I've worn it. Could I hear about the first time? It was the Academy Awards. Hey. <laughs> but uh, I didn't really do as much as I'm doing now, so you I know, didn't I, get a chance to see it. I don't know how to introduce you anymore. Are you Lady Anne? Or are you Not yet. I Sir, won't be. <laughs> Sir Miller? No, no. Anne has been knighted. Well, I will be. <laughs> of course, you've been knighted a few times in your life, haven't you? No. Huh? Huh? <laughs> no. No, it's the Knights of Malta. And they, oh. They're, they're knighting me, and I'll be... Well, you've, you've heard of Dame May Whitty. <laughs> well, it's, it, I'll be Dame... Ann Miller, which is a great honor, there but I don't expect like to use dame, it. <laughs> There's huh? nothing like a dame, right? I won't really be using it too what? much, How except you... uh, for some very special occasions. How were you picked? 
Uh, that's amazing, you know. Um, the only other lady in show business uh, that was selected was <laughs> Shirley Temple. And, uh, I, I, and me. Now, isn't that something? Maybe it's because both uh, of you tap dance. No, I no? think, no, I tell you, I don't know what it is. I think it's because I had a pretty good record in World War II of entertaining the soldiers, and I've done so many benefits, like all of the stars do. And how I was picked, we won't know until tomorrow night. I think that's part of the mystery of the service. Uh, they let you know. But I think it's because of all my years in show business and, and the many things that I've done, that they, they really go into your background and really, you know, you, they really do a, a whole number on you. So apparently I stood up. So I was selected, and I'm very, very pleased and very honored. That's really nice. Is it going to be a you. big ceremony? Yes. Um, they're going do they to put have, a sword on your they shoulder? Do. And, they do. They, yeah. they do the sword and the whole thing. And yeah. I, I, I'm quite frightened because I've never been through anything like this before. So it'll be a wonderful moment for so me. So they don't put you through the mill? No. no? <laughs> and I have a lovely group of people coming. And, very special friends. At a party coming. after? There's a big supper dance afterward. And uh, there are going to be, I think, like 50 other people being knighted that night. But I'm the only one in show business other than Richard Burton. I think they're flying to London to knight him. He is a Sir Richard Burton, but this is Knights of Malta. Now, he'll be so. Sir Sir Richard. He'll be too Sir Sir Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Annie. Tell me how, what's your life like now. Is it everything... You told me it was going to be starring on Broadway. You've been on a long couple of years now. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, it's been uh, this any coming fun? October. It'll be a year, and uh, I'm, I, I don't really have much fun. My life oh. is all show business, oh. uh, doing publicity, and then when I do have some time off, I might go to the 21 Club uh, to have a sandwich or go someplace like that, but I don't do too much because it is a hard show. And we all work very hard in it. And when the show's over, we're glad to just to go home and kind of fall in bed, really. Yeah. But it's... Who's weird? Well, no, I'm alone. Oh, you said no, we're so glad no. to go home and No, but I mean, Mickey and bed. me and the whole show, you know. You all are so, in the same room? Well, we just don't have much time, Merv, to go and really kick our heels up. Yeah. Because we're so exhausted at the end of the show. But I, what I really do, I take my dogs and I go up to New Hope, Pennsylvania. I rented a little home up there. And we take the dogs out in the fields, my secretary and myself. And that's my hype of having a ball, just to rest but and sit by the, the same Delaware Annie. River and, and just play with my toes. I mean, that's, that's what it amounts to. And breathing the air and being in the sunshine. That's what you're down to, huh? That's it, because, you know, being in the theater, um, and I'm sure Miss Merman, who I'm such a great, great admirer of, will tell you that it is a hard life. And Lord only knows that woman worked most of her life. She's been a big star on Broadway. She's done show after show. Yeah, but I mean, can this. you give up your whole life? But I think that's that? why she's not doing any more shows. I think she really, she'll be doing concerts and things, but I think she really just wants to get away from it. Because it is demanding, and I don't mind it because I'm giving two years of my life to this show. It's a pleasure. Where in the world would anybody except New York be received the way I've been received? Mickey's been received. I just want to get down and kiss the ground and thank my God for this reception. Sure. <laughs> Got to get the jewels hanging right here. No. Can you still uh, tap those things? You remember you were in uh, Ripley's or the Guinness Book or something for tapping Ripley's more... Believe It or Not. Believe It or Not, yeah. <laughs> well, you tap more taps. But that was when I was 14. I can do better now. But that was Ripley's Believe It or Not. Can you do 500 better? taps a minute. Sure. What are you up to now? Well, I haven't clocked it, but it's, I'm a lot better dancer than I was when I was 14. Yeah. Because I'm more experienced and I've, a lot of water has gone onto the bridge <laughs> since I've been 14. So, uh, but those were too the bad that we can't do There's no more Ripley Believe It or Not. That's why they don't do it anymore, you know? Do you miss those days at MGM? Yes. Oh, listen, I was at the tail end of the golden era, and that's another privilege I've had. Uh, tonight we have beautiful ladies that were in the midst of all that, but I was the tail end of it. And it's, uh, being at MGM is like being a Zigfield Follies woman. I mean, that, they were the greatest musicals. They were like big candy shops. There were color, there was glamour, there was fabulous stars. The likes of it will probably I hate to say we'll never see it again because we probably will someday, but, well, our, com our country right now, we have a pretty funny tax structure for all that. I doubt if we'll be able to spend that kind of money, yeah. but it Did is like a Louis B. Mayer? treat to see them. Oh, Mr. Mayer? Oh, he was wonderful. L.B. Mayer, 
Now, there are some ladies like Elizabeth Taylor, I know, that are bitter toward him, and several others, which I don't want to name, but I never had any, any problems except he was a lovely man. He was a, a man that loved women, and he respected women. He didn't like cursing or four-letter words. He'd walk out of a room if anybody used bad language in front of a woman. Right. Uh, he, he was a, a great gentleman. He was a credit to the industry, really. And uh, I think when Mr. Mayer died, I think that's when Hollywood sort of fell, was the beginning of the end for Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Because he, uh, he loved music, he loved glamour, he loved everything. Well, he was the king. Yeah, yeah. You didn't he go was. with him. At one time, my mother and I, and I'm serious, what? my mother and myself used to go dancing with Mr. Mayer with big All groups of people. All three of, of you people. together? Yes. And he was a dear man, but he invited Greer Garson along that evening, or he'd invite Ava Gardner or Lana Turner. Uh, he was always surrounded by his family. Right. What we about Howard Hughes? Family. You were never Howard Hughes's day, were you? No, Linda Darnell was his girlfriend, more or less. I didn't and know she that. was my dearest friend. Yeah. No, I was never really a... a, a, a a date to Howard. We were friends. You never married stars. I mean, all your husbands are not... No, but I hope not, the next time... Um, I hope the next time it'll be somebody in show business, because each time I married, I, you know, there was always somebody out of the business, and it didn't work for me. What are you doing this evening, Mur? Well... <laughs> you can you get, you get me an idea, too? I could... <laughs> Sir Mervyn and Dane Ann. Yes. Right? <laughs> but it's... I just never somehow married anybody in the business. And that was just plain dumb, because I think that's where my trouble began, you know. They didn't know what you did for a living? Well, it isn't that. I, I'll get, you want me to give you an example? Yeah. Walking in Chasen's one night, I remember right after I was married to my second husband, I've had two and a half, the last one was a no. Ah. The head waiter said to me, oh, welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Well, I took one look at him, oh boy. and that was the beginning of the end, because... Uh -oh. Men just don't like that, Merv. They no, hate anything so. like that. Now, if it had been a man in show business, he would have laughed. But not for he long. He would have thought that was funny. <laughs> well, no, gone, but <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, you know, yeah. like Carol Channing is married to Mr. Lowe, you know. Yeah. Now, he wouldn't have bothered about it. He would have thought that was funny. But not this fellow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that was the beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. It's no good. No. Really. Well, let me take a break. All right. And we'll look around the audience. Maybe All right. <laughs> the history of the uh, Great White Way, there have really been only a handful of names whose appearance in a Broadway show guarantees its great success. This woman is in that elite group. Although she has lately quit Broadway, she continues to make concert appearances with symphony orchestras, uh, she's on television, and she's acting all the time in films like Airplane and in the new Love Boat this coming season. Here's the dynamic Ethel Merman. I am glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. Ethel and I were just in Seattle together, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, in June. Yeah, wasn't that nice? Oh, that was wonderful. We opened a theater. We sure did. I yep. hope we didn't close it. No, <laughs> no, not the way you hit those notes that night. Yeah, you I, broke a couple of windows, but I we know, didn't close I that know. place. I think the volcano erupted again yeah. that night. Well, I said to the audience, can you imagine Ethel Merman and Mount St. Helens in the same state, right? <laughs> and you know what happened? You know, after the party, you know, after there was a party, a reception yeah. after. Were you there when that idiot spilled the drink all over my dress? Well, I know, but he's knowing it now. Good dress. I didn't know that, yes, Ethel. I saw I, you. You disappeared very quick. Well, I had to get an airplane the next morning to go to Nashville to do a hee-haw. To and a hee-haw? I did a hee-haw. Sure. You with, and Junior Sample? With Roy uh, Clark and Buck Owen. Ah. I did doing what comes naturally oh, yeah, for Manny yeah, Get yeah, Your Guns, well, sure, right? Yep. And I get to Nashville and all my luggage is gone. Oh, yeah. Ethel. It's show business, right? I know, It'll and I love change, it. It'll never change, right? Never, <laughs> never, never, never Want to sit down? Sure, why not? This, do you realize, Ethel, this is the first time... You and I have ever shared a bench together? A bench? Huh? I wish you were in the park. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I may get lucky here today. Well, there are how many of us? Five? You I sure? know. <laughs> and, and you already have your minks, so yeah, I save yeah. a little money there. That's huh? right, yeah. No, but you know what? Have you always bought your own mink? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah? Sure. Then I'm not obligated to anybody. Yeah.
No, you know what, Merv? This guy. You know, Merv, every time I've seen someone on your show that you have accompanied on piano, yeah. I envied them very, very much. Aren't you nice and, to see them? No, it's true. And so that's I really requested this, that uh, I do a sort of a, a nice ballad -y song by. And, and, and by George Gershwin, oh. and that Merv would accompany me on the piano. <laughs> A saying old says that love is blind still we're often told seek and ye shall find so I'm going to seek a certain lad I have in mind looking everywhere haven't found him yet he's the big affair I cannot forget only man I ever think of with regret. I'd like to add his initial to my monograph. Popularity in this country is due in part to the great talent of my next guest. She is a soprano of rare ability. And this season she's treating opera audiences with a performance in Tosca, a role she's never done before. And right now you are in for the most thrilling experience and you will notice that the sound is cut off in this <laughs> auditorium when she sings. She will sing an aria from Tosca. Would you please greet the great Renata Scotto. <laughs>
If you ran into an old boyfriend, would the years look better on him than on you? I wondered, until I discovered Oil of Olay, the beauty fluid that's similar to your skin's own natural fluids. Each drop penetrates quickly, without being greasy, easing dryness to help soften the signs of age. Has it really been ten years? Mm -hmm. You'd never know. <laughs> Thank you. Discover the mystery of Oil of Olay. It can help you look younger, too. And I love this clock. Why, oh, I'm so nervous. Sorry. The doctor says caffeine makes me tense. Well, don't you drink Sanka Brandy caffeinated coffee? Oh, I bought that for my husband. I only drink real coffee. Sanka Brandy is real coffee and taste it. Try it. Mmm, it is real. Real good. Hi, Anne. What's new in antiques? <laughs> Everyone says I'm new since I switched to Sanka Brand. <laughs> Sanka Brand. Enjoy your coffee and enjoy yourself. Give me strength. Airwick introduces Airwand, the first full-strength two-way air freshener. Airwand is full strength, the only two-way air freshener with undiluted deodorizers. Give me strength. Undiluted, so it will last 60 days. Undiluted, so Airwand works two ways, like a solid or like a spray. Give me strength. I'll quit, I'll quit. Just wave sudden odors away. New Airwand in four fragrances. Give me strength. Go on the road with Bob Hope, read about the election night extravaganza, and meet James Gregory of Barney Miller, all in TV Guide. My customers get what they order. They want a half-inch bolt, they get a half-inch bolt. But that's not the way it works with this Proposition 10. With it, you don't know what you're getting. Some government regulator comes along after you vote to tell you what you've bought. Where it's legal to smoke, and where it isn't, after you vote. Uh-uh. I've got to know before I buy. <laughs> Anne sang her repertoire. You did of opera for you. She Can did we do our thing? Cheery Berry yeah. Binge. Do you yes. want to hear us do our thing? Huh? <laughs> we have a... <laughs> Imagine, this is going to be a riot. It's... Is that it? Got something? Are you ready, Ethel? I learned up like the lights. We got nothing to hope but the heights. Ready for power. It's hard to call Renata, though, a long hair. Not a good book. You are getting, may I say, a fiery reputation. Huh? I read a lot about you in the papers. Oh, yes? Yeah. Oh, yes. You'd... But you oh, have to be uh... temperamental because it's such a delicate instrument. Everything has to be right around you, huh? Of course. <laughs> no, but, I mean, serious. Okay. I get temperamental sometimes because I'm first, I'm professional. Right. And I want everything to be right. To be right. To be so and, right. Uh, and Absolutely. everybody has to work. Very hard as I do because I mean I'm a prima donna and the responsibility is mine when I'm on stage yep. because I'm a prima donna but not because I have the responsibility I have the own to be the only one uh, work hard everybody so that sometimes if I don't find somebody work like me I get oh, yeah. I have a little <laughs> nail but her. Right. Right. yeah but she punched a tenor in Italy. <laughs> Let him have it, good. She's sure. not really a punch, but slap. She made you slap with a tenor. Very Boom. strong, like yeah. the chuck. Yeah. And five fingers on his face. Right. So you know why? why? Because I was singing a duet, uh -huh. and he left me alone on stage, and when he went backstage to eat an apple. Oh. Can you believe that? In yeah, the middle of the duet? In the middle of the duet. <laughs> Well, maybe they got hungry. Those tenors have to eat a lot. Yes, but he could eat before, as I did. I mean, I did I eat before, That's so funny. why he had to eat on stage? So when he came back, we had uh, um, an opera, which I supposed to slap, you know, but yeah. make believe, you know. 
No, I was so angry with him that yeah. when he came the moment, chuck, I gave him a slap so wow. He was shocked like this. He said, what do you say? And what about that conductor? Oh, we conduct many times. I, uh, you fight with and, uh, we, I fight with some. The conductor is not the boss. Oh, I mean, it's not, why have to be the boss? I mean, uh, the boss uh, is not the conductor. The conductor has to, be, to the, do his work the best he can. And, uh, there are good conductors, there are bad conductors. When they are too bad, then you argue with them because you think they have to, to accompany with the orchestra and sometimes they don't. Or they want, they don't want to do because... And what do you do? Uh, yeah, but he's uh, supposed to follow you, not you follow him. Not on Broadway. No. I what mean, do you mean? On Broadway. No. Huh? What do you on mean Broadway. <laughs> what do you mean you're not supposed to follow me? On Broadway? Oh, yeah, with you. That's uh, different. We thought yeah. that I mean, too. Too. I mean, it's too. not a come to follow me or to follow him. It's a matter to be together and to work together and to, to understand blend. To blend together. each other, you know. And some conductor, they don't want. They just see, I'm the conductor. I know the music better and they know. So they have to follow me. No, why? That's the bad conduct because the good one, they they know how to, sure. you know, they, it's a communication to, to be with. So uh, sometime. I... Where's the opera house that all the singers are scared to death to sing in? Oh, in Italy, La yeah. Parma. Parma, no Parma. Parma. Oh, there's many stories. Uh, they talk. Uh, they talk if uh, they don't like it, right? Uh, oh yes, <laughs> uh, they they. Mm, <laughs> so many stories. There was a tenor one night, and uh, it seemed so awful, so that uh, they, they talk all the night, they said something very bad against him, but the day after, he left, and uh, when he was at the, the rail uh, station, railroad, railroad station, station yeah. he needs a, a porter. In Parma, everybody goes to the opera, so it was uh, 6.30 in the morning, so he took the train, he left. And he needs the porter, so he called the man and said, please, can you take my luggage? And the porter watching him said, you is the one who sang last night uh, at the opera house. Oh, yes, I am. Bring yourself your luggage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't fool around. Renata Scotto, we'll come back. <laughs> I think I just sold the well sculpture. Wonderful. Have some coffee. Whoa, only half a cup. Don't you like my coffee? Mmm, love the rich taste. It's the caffeine I could do without. You happen to be drinking brim decaffeinated coffee. This is brim? This is freeze-dried brim, and it's decaffeinated, so you don't have to stop at half a cup. If it tastes this rich, I don't want to stop. Fill it to the rim. With brim? Fill your cup to the rim with rich-tasting brim, ground or freeze-dried. We're gonna get together and have a real good time. How about an omelet? Hey, I'd love one. Got a place in line. You'll find this international omelet only at your international house of pancakes restaurant. Farm fresh eggs, rich cheese, peppers, onions, ham, and chili salsa. The international omelet. What a meal, what a meal. International house of pancakes. What a meal, what a meal. Your house of pancakes makes. Today's target, Higley's Market. Objective, Mrs. Paul's Shorgas Board sale. Last year, the low Shorgas Board prices made their seafood disappear fast. I miss the fried clams completely. This year, we move faster. Ethel, you grab the fish fillets. Gertrude, the fish sticks. Okay? Move out. And I don't get lost in the dessert aisle. Mrs. Paul's Shorgas Board prices make our seafood move fast, so you better do the same. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Wherever you're moving, make it nice going United. United Van Lines, the worldwide movers who take the load off your mind as well as your hands. Delta Airlines now flies to London, Frankfurt, and over 90 other cities in the U.S. and abroad. Delta is ready when you are. First of all, we, I have an unpleasant duty to do. The curtain will rise at the Mark Hellinger Theater without the star if I don't get you out of here. You have a stage manager back there saying, please get her out the door. I know. But I'm Ann afraid. Miller has to get to Sugar Babies. But, yes. oh, we love it. I hate it. to leave because I, I wanted so much to see Lillian Gish and Myrna Loy. But please remember me to them. You betcha And I Peter will. Rogers, who is our 
the gentleman that's given us all our coats tonight. You'll Gave every one of these ladies a name. So He's give a big them all spender. my love and thank you all for having me. And Miller. Those legs go all the way right up to here. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyone who ever saw the Thin Man series or any number of great movies such as The Best Years of Our Lives, Test Pilot, and most recently uh, with Burt Reynolds in the end, and Just Tell Me What You Want, knows this extraordinary woman I'm about to introduce. She is New York's symbol of uh, charm, sophistication, and strength. Ladies and gentlemen, Myrna Loy. <laughs> last thing she said to me was don't sing after that <laughs> were you going to hit a high note for us no <laughs> wasn't it incredible beautiful. i don't think it's ever been better done it was absolutely beautiful as i introduced you myrna it occurred to me i'll bet everybody here that knows movies and loves you would want to know have you ever seen william powell again not very long ago as a matter of fact he lives in palm springs he lives in palm springs and i went i i bearded him in his den as it were because yes. he has a tendency to uh keep you away he did for a long time but then finally i just go i go down and spend time with a friend of mine i call up at four and say i'm coming at four and he says yes but mousy is out playing i said i don't care about mousy i'm coming to see you and i go <laughs> just and like the two of you the relationship you had in the thin man yeah and he's incredible he's really quite wonderful i mean he has lots of problems but of course the greatest thing he said to me he said i'm doing pretty well for a hundred year old man <laughs> <laughs> So then I realized he still had this sense of humor. There isn't a day that goes by that we turn on television and there isn't a Myrna Loy movie. Yeah. You recognize that, don't For you? For which I don't get paid, you know, yeah, by the way. Yeah. But anyway, we won't go into that. Nothing before 1960. Oh, really? Oh, nothing, no. Nothing, oh. nothing before 1960. Everything was wiped out up until 1960. Mm -hmm. Does that steam you? A bit, yes. Sure. Yeah, well, I, think it, I should think it would. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's something we'll go into later. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of, there's a great number of um, theatrical productions concerned with the Hollywood of your beginnings. Yes. Do you like them? Not no? much. No? No. And the Both? biographies, have you read the biographies? All lies. All, most of them. All lies. Really? Lies. Lies. I mean, lies. all those guys at Shelley Winters? Oh, uh, I don't know about Shelley. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not speaking about, no, but I'm talking about the, the nasty ones, the mean ones, you know including Christina's book about her mother, which was a, is, a, is a shocking thing. It's not true. It just ain't true. You knew Joan Crawford. Oh, very well. I was her oldest friend. We, we, got, we, we met each other when, she did, uh, when we did Pretty Ladies, which was the first thing that we ever did. And we worked in that. We played chorus girls in that. And we worked on a thing called uh, a chandelier, in which we hung on like this, and our feet were on the other end of it. Right. I have photographs of it somewhere. And there were all these women <laughs> lying on this, making this human chandelier. Oh, it was incredible. It's like the Errol Flynn book. I laughed right out loud when I read that. Oh, yeah. And then when I read all of the things in it, all the people's quotes, he was a Nazi, you know, he's all this stuff. But all the people that said that are dead. How are you ever going to check it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Everyone looked at it and said, well, that guy said that, and he's dead. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, you can't yeah, check any of that it's stuff. Crime. It's a shame. It's that a sh goes I don't know what they're doing. Well, I'm, I mean, it seems to be the trend these days. Yeah. I don't know why. Burt Reynolds was just on the show recently, and I said to him, Burt, I read where you're going to finally publish your autobiography. He said, Yeah, but it's not going to be kiss and tell. I'm going to tell a lot of things, but not kiss and tell. No. You know. Mm -hmm. have, have you heard from him? You're very good friends, aren't well, we're you? We're good friends, yes. yeah. He calls me mom. <laughs> that son of a gun. <laughs> well, I played his mother in the end, you know, yeah. and he's so sweet. He came to town not very long ago and invited me to come out on the set, and then, then they had the strike and he had to go home, so I, I didn't see him, but we're good friends. <laughs> My next guest is indeed a legend, fur coat or no fur coat, she is a legend. <laughs> One of the greatest actresses in uh, movie-making history. She's made over 100 films. 
and continues to work today, uh, in addition to traveling throughout the world, promoting interest in American silent films. Would you welcome the incomparable Miss Lillian Gish? <laughs> And for your first number, what are you going to sing? <laughs> That's what I wondered. What am I doing out here when I can't sing? Oh, I you know. You don't have to sing. Uh, well, I studied with Victor Morell. Yes. You know, have heard of him? Yes. He was the original Falstaff. He taught me, uh, when he was an older man, he liked to paint. And he wouldn't, you couldn't go and take lessons from him, but if I would pose for him for half an hour he would teach me for half an hour so of course i was in my teens and i was all excited and you know what he did he put me in a dark room and he said now you go in there and paint with sound the way you do down on the screen and i wasn't old enough to know what he was talking about uh, so you but missed he, your singing he lessons he did teach me phonetics that you do you speak from here to here. If anything goes wrong with the throat, you pay no attention to that. You don't lose your voice. And I've never, and I've done 50 plays. Yeah, and and never I've had... never lost, um, uh, I've never had, oh dear. No, 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 here, here. <laughs> Not there, Miss Good. That's better. In these days where you read in the paper of these extraordinary salaries that stars demand and pieces of the pictures, in 1926, you signed for eight pictures, was it? Six pictures for $800,000? No, I got a million. I didn't want it. I wanted a small living wage. I never worked for money. I worked for people. I wanted the best people, the best writers, the best directors, best actors, best actors. But you didn't care about the salary? No. I wanted a happy life. And I got the best people, and I had <laughs> a happy life. <laughs> but there was a time, Miss Gish, that they wanted to jazz up your image a little bit. Uh, they thought you were a little too straight-laced for the movies. Oh, I... you. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Irving Thalberg, whom I adored, he let me do three films. I did five at MGM. He let me make three of my own, the way I wanted to. That was Boehm, The Scarlet Letter, and The Wind. And then he sent for me one day, a uh, Mr. Mayor, and said, you know, you're sitting way up there on a pedestal, and nobody cares. Let me knock you off and that everybody will care. And I said, well, what do you mean, Mr. Mayor? He said, let me arrange a scandal for you. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> and that was a bit of a shock. My mother was ill, Dorothy was in Europe. I hadn't anyone to talk it over with. So I said, well, give me three days to think it over. <laughs> because they had just had a great sample of that. They had an actress who's films didn't sell very well and th there was a scandal broke on the front pages and boom the she went right through it yeah anyway after three days i thought well how am i going to give a performance off stage and on stage off screen and on screen yeah. i haven't got that much vitality right. so i said thank you mr mayor but i'll go back to where i came from the theater i i don't think i could Handle a scandal. No. Mm -mm. Or pretend a scandal. I'm not good at telling lies because uh, my memory isn't that good. You no. have to remember. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back. Lillian Gish is with us. Safeway introduces the double cash rebate. Now low price protection, where it counts, on your total food bill. Buy at least 25 different items at Safeway, totaling $20 or more. The same week, 
check the total price against the same items at any local market. If that total is lower, present your Safeway tape in the other store's prices, and Safeway will rebate double the difference. That is the double cash rebate, Safeway's low price protection. Football used to be my world, and a great coach helped me make the most of it. Hey, Dad! How'd it go? Score twice! Right on! I'm in the real world now. Family and business. And I found a great coach to help me with that, too. The Los Angeles Times. Every day it gives me more news about more things than I could get anywhere else. If you want to make the most of your world, you better know the score. Here's how. News tonight, a summary of the day's major stories. Here's Charles Rowe. On Metro News in 30 minutes, Carter's plan to gain the release of the hostages before the election turned down by Iran. Carter and Reagan set the date for debate. You'll see highlights of tonight's debate between Cranston and Gann. Roberta Weintraub of the L.A. School Board under fire again. An L.A. school bus shot at, three students slightly hurt. And Gil Stratton will have World Series highlights on Metro News in just 30 minutes. Olympia Gold challenges Miller Lite head to head. Lite claims everything you ever wanted in a beer and less. Less what? Certainly not calories. Let's look. 96 calories. And Olympia Gold, only 70 calories. That means Miller Lite has 37% more calories, so much for less. If you drink light beer to save calories, you want Olympia Gold's 70 calories and great beer taste. Olympia Gold's the perfect balance of calories and taste. What more could you ask? Olympia Gold is what light beer was meant to be. Tomorrow night at 9, Louise Lasser joins the Merv Griffin Show. And tonight at 10.30, Metro News, L.A.'s number one primetime newscast. Followed at 11 by MASH. Here on Channel 11, the ones to watch. That's a strong story. As a working woman all your life, uh, Miss Gish, have you always felt that you've had equal opportunities? What, you mean women's lib liberation? Yeah. <laughs> I was born liberated. Were you? <laughs> yes, I was in the theater by the time I was five. No one ever interfered with me. I didn't plan it. it. All those things happened to me. They always helped me. Every, the theater is the most kind and loving world you could be in. And all the people in it. It's true. It's true. You ought to know that. You, you meet so many of us. But don't you feel that? Oh, that, I agree. Yes, yeah, definitely, Miss Gates. There's no, you hear about all this jealousy and fighting that goes on. No. I've never found that. That's, that's, that's very just, rare. That's just in the opera. And, uh, <laughs> no, it isn't. But I, I don't suppose you could ask an actress, truthfully or truly, if they've always felt liberated, because all actresses have been liberated women who have really received stars, I would say, equal opportunities and equal pay. So it's really not fair to ask that question of someone in the theater or in film show business. Well. Money isn't the answer to happiness, you know. It. When Dorothy was in her teens, Adolf Zucker sent for her because after Hearts of the World, he wanted one of us for uh, eight pictures for a million dollars. And I asked Mother, who should go? I should go, or Dorothy should go. And she said, I think Dorothy, because you get along with Mr. Griffith better. So up she went. He told her he'd wanted eight comedies and she would get a million dollars. She listened and thanked him very much and said no and came home and told Mother. Mother said, Dorothy, why did you do that? She said, Mother, at my age, all that money? Why, it might ruin my character. <laughs> really? And she was right because Jack Pickford was getting $10,000 a week and he was in his 20s, little, two or three years older than Dorothy. He was alcohol and so forth. He went right down. He was dead before he was 30. So she had a good reason. <laughs> You've worked very hard for the, the cause of preserving the silent films, haven't you? I believe that film, this little thing, big and little film, is the most powerful thing in the world today. It's the only machine that can touch the hearts and minds of mankind. And it's powerful, and we just better be careful what we put up there. Take the responsibility. Mm. 
generally, is the industry responsible in the films they make? Why, everybody's responsible for the film they do, don't you think? Yes. Do you see good movies today? Some are beautiful. Right. What was it that Charles Lawton told you one time about... Uh, oh, yes. Was it uh, movies, people who go to movies? Well, he wanted to make a, a, a director film himself. He never had. He was a great actor, as all of you know and remember. Uh, so he came here to MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, and they called me and said, do you know what Mr. Lawton is doing over here, looking at all your old films? And I said, no, he's a friend of mine and hasn't called me. Well, in another week, he called and said, ask if I'd come over and have tea. And he had James A.G., the great writer, right. his, his um, cameraman, and three or four others of his crew, and said that he was going to make a film. And that when he started to go to movies, he said, we sat like this looking at them. We were so interested. He said, now I go to movies, and they sit there like this eating popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I want to sit them up in their seats again. And then he had all the films sent to California, and they studied it. The result was The Night of the Hunter. And now Mona, um, the Museum of Modern Art, they're doing a retrospective with some of my films. and. Uh, the other night, they ran Night of a Hunter, and it's as modern as tomorrow. Oh, sure. It stood the test of time. He did get them this way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I were making a new movie deal today, I'd ask for, you know, a percentage of the popcorn concession. <laughs> In many cases, they make more money than the film. Oh, oh they do. Know. That's how they pay for it. Sure. Popcorn. And it hurts my pride. I've been around the world three times in the last five years, and in all the countries there are these old cathedrals, you know, as in our country, that went up, oh, all of them holding thousands of people, not hundreds. Roxy's, as you know, held 6,424 people, and it was filled from 10 in the morning until 2 the next morning. Now, my little meat market on 69th Street is a movie theater. I doubt if it holds 200, mm. and that hurts my pride. <laughs> I want to bring back the universal language, which is fine music and great stories. Good. Yeah. We'll come back after this message. Swiss, the name most people want. Swiss collection, Swiss craftsmanship, Swiss accuracy, Swiss styling, without the expense of Swiss timepiece. That's a boulevard. That's a boulevard, too. The Swiss watch without the Swiss price. Uncle Tim, I'm making dinner. Want to stay? What are you having? Pork chops. Just pork chops? Pork chops with potatoes, or stovetop stuffing for pork. Stuffing? I'm staying. Stovetop stuffing made specially for pork. It makes it a meal worth staying for. Wow, this stovetop tastes great with pork. Stovetop made it to go with pork. Great combination. Stovetop stuffing for pork. Look for the green box. I'm John McNichol. I was born in this part of the country. I went to school, married, began my career, and had a drinking problem all here in the West. I needed help. I called Raleigh Hills Hospital. They've been successfully treating people like me with an alcohol problem since 1942. If you need help to stop drinking, call Raleigh Hills. They have a program that works. Look in the phone book for the Raleigh Hills nearest you in Los Angeles, Ventura, and Orange Counties. Anything goes. It's friendship, friendship. I get no kick from champagne. But you'll get a kick out of Ginger Rogers and Sid Caesar starring in Anything Goes. You'll hear all your favorite Cole Porter songs. For the tops in entertainment, don't miss Ginger Rogers and Sid Caesar in Anything Goes at the Wilshire Theater. Tickets at the box office or call 852-1900. Also through Mutual Charge Line or Ticket Front Agency. Want to spice up your life? Try Lipton's flavored tea bags. Black rum flavor takes me to the islands. Lipton flavored teas will spice up your life.
As you can see, we've moved down here to the center of the Vivian Beaumont Theater in Lincoln Center with uh, Renata Scatto. This is your, is this your favorite? Yes, this Norma. is my favorite opera, and I'm so glad I did the recording. Now, you, you go into a studio to do this. I mean, this is oh, off yes, the stage. Oh, yes, we did this in London, uh, in the big studio. Right, yes, right. Yes. And this, nice of course, this is La Boheme. La Boheme, mm -hmm. yes. I love this recording, too. I did also with Maestro Levine. Right, right. And I enjoyed that a lot. What kind of feeling is that when you're, you're taking on Tosca? The sheer, is that an exciting feeling to take on a new oh, yes. opera like that? Every time, you know, I have a new character, a new role, I'm excited about it. I mean, I, when I, last year, perhaps, when I did Manon Let's Go, I study and I prepared a new role. And this year for Tosca, too, I mean, it's exciting. All the and with a new body, it's really exciting, isn't it? That may be exciting for the, the audience that they can see. Yeah, but I mean, you're fitting in the costumes shape better. Shape instead to see the prima donna like yeah. this. <laughs> see, the first time we worked together. Ah, huh? yes. You were I a little. was 43 pounds. More. 43 pounds, right after we worked together. Yes, but I All I did was just say, Renata, get that off. And uh, <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. Could, no. could 43 be. pounds? Yes. But uh, television, I mean, because I saw myself. Uh, and alive from the Met and La Boheme, the first telecast, and I, I was 43 pounds more, and I supposed to die by tuberculosis, I'm supposed yeah. to be skinny, this. Yeah. Like, so when I saw myself, I said, this is me, me, mamma mia. So no, I yeah. covered my eyes and I listened to the voice, I liked the sound, I liked the music, I liked myself singing, but I couldn't watch myself. But isn't it so better when you're singing with like a Pavarotti? that you be a little bigger so when he hugs you, I mean, he could break every bone in your body now. Yes, huh? he could, he could. Yes, right, right. But it, you don't need that weight to hit those notes, do you? No, absolutely, I feel more strong now, because now, I, I mean, I, and agile, I can also... Hmm? You want to carry me off, do you? No, 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 don't do that, don't. I could. <laughs> no, no, we don't need a soprano with a hernia, no. I'll tell you. <laughs> Duet, duet together, you know. Pardon? To have a duet together, and then you hold me in your arms. Me sing you know? yes. with you Renata. You sing with me. Why not? I, I was waiting so long. But Renata, I'd be too shy. I don't think I could. Uh, I don't know if I could handle it. I'd sound like a choir boy next to you. I think you would sound wonderful. Who's playing for us? Is that John Atkins? Yes, I want him to. Brilliant harmonist. John Atkins. <laughs> and after this duet, he'll be quitting show business. Uh, you will, won't you, John? Uh, mm. Okay. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> All right, you asked for it. Renata. Thank you. 
right back after this message. My idea of the perfect lip gloss would be pot gloss in a stick. Because pot gloss is soft and shiny, but it can be too messy for a stick. Well, what you're seeing here is Lip Quencher Gloss Stick. Six glowing shades of gloss in a stick. So it's neat and easy to control. Yet Lip Quencher Gloss Stick is soft and shiny as pot gloss. Lip Quencher Gloss Stick. It's the best of both worlds rolled into one. Our new car. Uh-uh. Only after we protect you with polyglyco. Hmm. I'm getting polyglyco all over me. Rust proofing, textile and vinyl protection, polyglyco sound shield, and paint sealant. With the purchase of this package, we get a consumer protection plan from polyglyco. It includes a one-year free membership in the USAC MD Motor Club. And look, a finance guarantee during the first year will pay up to 80% of 11 car payments if I lose my job. Polyglyco consumer protection plan. Available at new car dealers everywhere. Call this toll-free number for the dealers nearest you. Where are you? England. The Riviera. The Swiss Alps. Norway. No, you're in all those places. You're in the South Pacific. And we can take you to more of it than anyone. We're in New Zealand. We fly the Pacific. And we do it every day. You know, I started out walking a beat, and over the years, I've tried to stay in touch with the people and their needs. When I became chief, I started the Neighborhood Watch. It helped us cut crime, and it brought us closer to the people. Now I'm asking for a new beat. This one's in Sacramento. I spent most of my life trying to be a good law keeper. Now I'm ready to be a good law maker. Joining us now is the man who is responsible for one of the most successful campaigns in advertising history. This is his book, What Becomes a Legend Most, and in it features the most unique women in the world. Here is this adver advertising tycoon, Mr. Peter Rogers. Peter? <laughs> That's why you got in the business, so you can kiss legends, right? Exactly. Right? Put you down there, Peter. Thank you. That's been an extraordinary campaign. How did it all start? Where'd you get the idea? Well, actually, it wasn't my idea. I art directed it from the beginning. Yeah. And I've been the lucky one who got to meet all these ladies and put fur coats on them and take them to photography sessions. What distinguishes a, 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 a legend from a mere celebrity? Well, I think we've just had five of the best definitions that I could, Webster's could ever come up with right here. <laughs> but I think uh, longevity, certainly glamour. Again, we've got enough of that here today. And I don't know, it happens to some overnight, and others it takes a longer time. I think Rita Hayworth became a legend when she peeled off her gloves and sang, put the blame on Mame and Gilda. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yet when Rita Hayworth was filmed for Black Gamma, People didn't recognize her, did they? It was one of the few that people have not recognized. Why? At the time, she had her hair cropped very short. She was slightly overweight, and a lot of people thought she was Ann Baxter. I'd like to photograph her again today because I've seen pictures recently, and she looked terrific. Who's the first? Uh, Melina McCurry. Oh, I love her. I love her. She's been fun. on here many times. Yeah. And it was a funny experience because I had never met a legend at the time, and I picked her up <laughs> at number one Fifth Avenue. She had her hair and curlers, no makeup on. I thought the campaign had ended before it began. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rita Hayworth, uh, let me see. Others that you had problems with people recognizing? Um, Maybe who might be legends in our industry, but not, might not be that famous. Well, I think or... Leontine Price, when she ran, was somewhat of a problem. I, I think she's one of the most beautiful women in the world, but sometimes, pardon me, opera singers aren't as well known as uh, Movie actresses. Right. <laughs> you said it, I didn't. Yeah. Who gave you the most trouble? The most trouble? 
Well, I, I, no trouble, really. I think Dietrich it took the longest to photograph. She, it was called on account of rain about ten times. But finally, when we got to this shooting, it was quite fantastic because above, she's one of the most professional people you've ever mel met, and she literally arranged every hair on the coat with Avedon, with his camera standing there, after telling him to bring a mirror. And she said, now, you know, when she was ready to be photographed, she was ready to be photographed. Lauren Bacall, fun? Well, not a bundle of laughs from my experience, but uh, she's a terrific lady. She, I, I must say she educated me on how to handle a legend. I picked her up in a regular car. I didn't know at that time that only big black limousines are silver bays. <laughs> and, and as we crossed town to Avedon's studio to be photographed, she said that she would like a Maximilian fur coat. And my arrangement was with another <laughs> furrier. And I thought, well, well. She said, Maximilian fur coat to turn the car around. We did not turn the car around. I got the photograph and she got the Maximilian. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a lady who knows. Uh, she knows what she wants and she gets it. Judy Garland. Well, that was sad, but I think there have been so many stories about Judy. Uh, she was wonderful, but I really literally took me three days and three nights to get the photograph because she wasn't in the best of condition at the time. But uh, it turned out to be a sensational photograph. Oh, that's a great and, one, right? Yeah, you know, what a lady. On the cover here, yeah. Anything on, I see Betty Davis. Well, that was very funny because when I picked up Miss Davis, I picked her up at the Plaza Hotel. She came in from Connecticut for the day and she smoked one cigarette after the other and as we crossed town and she said dick 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 it was in blue i don't know what the hell she was talking about yeah. so finally when we got to the shooting i always thought she said pizza 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 uh, <laughs> not that not that day uh, at any rate when we got to the shooting uh dick alvedon had had an abscess tooth and he was late for the shooting so there was a little makeup man who was very famous a legend in his own right who made up all the ladies back in those days named eddie sins and he came to the door and she looked up at him and she said, Dick, Dick, it was in blue. And I said, Miss Davis, that was not Mr. Abaddon. Mr. Abaddon, it was Eddie Sins. She said, oh, I knew I'd guff it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a little story when I, I did the photograph because I, I, brought, I brought with me three dresses to, to put the cape and do the photograph. So I let them, the photographs, choose the dresses. And he said, oh, this one, not this is black no this is not so let's try without I said, without <laughs> yeah so at first it took off <laughs> first it took off my skirt then it took off my blouse then also my bra was too much so i said but listen how can i do the picture like this I said it's okay it's okay so wrapped in a, in a cape I had nothing, I'm sorry, this is a little X-ray. <laughs> but I did this, I did this little kind my of thing picture. You're running <laughs> there. Sarah, what, what, what? Oh, but I have another little story. What? Can I say? Sure. First time I wear my black llama was in, in San Francisco at the premiere of Gioconda. After the, the premiere with success, I went to the restaurant. I, eat uh, everything i mean and then i because i like so much pancakes i order pancakes and pancakes pancakes after the meal after yes uh, you know after premiere no because and a I waffle maybe like to a joke on the, the heavy roll so i ordered pancakes and the weather came and i had my cape my black llama here and the, the weather came with uh, maple syrup and something happened that the maple syrup broke and Everything was in my cape. The maple. Oh. Can you believe I said, oh, you spoiled completely my what I'm going to do now. Did you hit a high note? Uh, yes. <laughs> Did you? It was an E flat, I think. Uh -huh. But then I went back to the hotel. <laughs> I couldn't say nothing to the poor guy. I mean, I couldn't pay that black glamour. So I went back to the, my hotel and said, now I'm going to see if you are a legend. I'm going to try something. I took some water. And I wash it. With what? You wash your meat? Yes. I said, it's spoiled. So I'm washed with water. So I took plain water, an handkerchief, and I start to wash down. Then I said, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope. So I hang on my closet and I wait half an hour. Perfect. I said, you are a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
hope you haven't frightened off tomorrow's legend with your story, earlier story. Joan <laughs> Floyd's going to be photographed tomorrow for the campaign. Oh, you're a legend tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, good. You were a legend for a couple of years. Joan Crawford's name came up a while ago, I see. She's well, a... I was glad to hear what I heard because I didn't know the mommy dearest Joan Crawford. She was a very close friend of mine and had a great sense of humor. I remember once she asked me to a matinee and I couldn't go, it was on a Saturday. And I called on Monday and I said, how was the play? She said, wonderful, darling. I got three standing ovations. <laughs> ah ah. But she, was, she was, I thought, terrific. And I never Do you remember the first time you met her? Yes, absolutely. I, I rang five o'clock cocktails. And when she said five o'clock, she did mean five o'clock. I arrived at five o'clock, rang the doorbell, and there stood the legend and rubber thong shoes, a muumuu, and a hair and a rubber band. But it was still Joan Crawford. No makeup. <laughs> you knew it. And I see my friend Lena Horn. Uh, she was wonderful. I, I picked her up for the shooting, and she had on a black llama Maximilian fur coat. And I said, you know, what do you want another fur coat for? She said, a lady never gets enough mink from a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Streisand. Well, that was a five-hour wait. But I must say, it was earlier in her career. It was before she ever made a movie. And I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. And finally, this offer nanny came down the staircase. That was her offer nanny stage. And I thought I'd been in the, place, the wrong place for five hours. Mm -hmm. But the photograph was sensational. It came off very well. Any story, Ethel, on the day you got your mink? No, but he, well, you kept sh showing one. I didn't expect to do the thing with the leg. Remember, Peter? Right. Yeah, and next I knew I was, I was, uh, hmm. Well, they said the, the wrong coat. <laughs> That's right. It was, so we it draped it. We pulled the it, sleeves it in and made a toga yeah. and showed those great legs. Miss Gish? They photographed me every way but upside down. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> Why? I liked it, though. It was a pleasure. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> now, Two and a half hours. The way the deal works is... All of these w legends come, and they are given the fur coat? Yes. Uh, we, I make the arrangements with them through a friend, personally, or whatever. And uh, the coats they're photographed in are not the coats they receive. They got custom-made black llama mink coats. Ah. But what, we, what I try to do is pick the most glamorous coat or cape or whatever I can for the shooting. So we all look our best. Now, is Joe Namath one of yours? We gave him a black llama coat about 10 years ago as a publicity stunt. We got a million dollars worth of free publicity out of it because it was, I stole it later and it, it hit the front page of Esquire magazine. But there are men who have, there's one. There's only one in the campaign uh, and that was a group shot of Rudolph Nureyev, Dame Margot Fontaine and Martha Graham. Because in the book here when you come to where his picture should be it says, a note from Peter Rogers. For unknown reasons, Mr. Nureyev refused permission to they're, reproduce the photograph. They're still unknown. Huh? I don't know why anybody would pose for a campaign, run in six national magazines, and then not want to be a part of a book that the royalties would go to cancer research. Right. It's but a wonderful anyway, book. It's What's the total there. number of legends? Uh, about 44 with the new ones tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, the ones who are not in the book are Miss Gish, unfortunately, because the book had just closed. Uh, Ann Miller, Maggie Smith, Lana Turner, who we just photographed, and Miss Loy, who we'll photograph tomorrow. So they'll be so in buy the, the book, and in the next edition, we'll have these charming ladies. Part two. <laughs> Our thanks to Peter Rogers and to the legends. We'll be back. After this. On Metro News in just five minutes, the Persian Gulf War escalates as Iran turns thumbs down on Carter's plan to free the hostages before the election. Carter and Reagan finally set the time and place for their debate. You'll see highlights of tonight's debate between Cranston and Gann. L.A. School Board President Roberta Weintraub under fire again. George Putnam comments on the politics of our national defense. Gil Stratton will have highlights from tonight's capper of the World Series. And a report on a new look for an old L.A. newspaper. Saving at Bank of America pays big. Our two-and-a-half-year time certificate pays the highest bank interest rate allowed. The current rate is 11.3%. And you get the convenience of over a 1,000 branches statewide. Most have walk-up or drive-up windows where you can bank early and late 
plus the convenience of making savings deposits automatically. It's all part of the growing money convenience system at Bank of America. You can wreck a good sandwich stuffing it in a small bag. Oh, this thin bargain bag is too narrow. Betty, try Glad sandwich bags. They're wider than your bargain bags, and only Glad has a pleated bottom that expands to fit your sandwich. You get about 20% more room. Wider and pleated. They are easier to use. Right, Betty. For a better looking sandwich, use a better fitting sandwich bag. Yes, we're number one, and we're Glad. Are you using the wrong machine to soften your clothes? I use a liquid in the washer. I use Bounce in the dryer. That softens? Sure does. My liquid controls static cling. Usually. <laughs> Bounce controls it better. And keeps my clothes smelling fresh. Hmm, how come? Bounce works in the dryer, not the washer. So its fresheners can't get rinsed away. I'm using the wrong machine. And the wrong softener. The Self-Actualization Institute for the Deaf helps deaf people to get off the welfare rolls and learn independent living skills. Let the deaf hear from you by calling for information at 931-1291. That's 931-1291. Well, I want to thank all of you legends. You are legends, and you're terrific. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your enthusiasm. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Maytag Jet Clean Dishwasher, the one that outcleans them all in a dual wash regular cycle. The Maytag Dishwasher, built like a Maytag, cleans like a Maytag. Reuniti, it's the best love imported wine in America today. Try Reuniti on ice, red, white, and rosé. Like love, it's pure and natural. Polyglycoat Sound Shield for the noisy underside of your car, not an undercoating. Polyglycoat is a sound shield available at new car dealers only. Thank you.